So I don't know if this is the right time to bring this up, but but what's your opinion on um, you know how if you get to type two diabetes and then you know you try you supposedly try all the other interventions like lifestyle and whatever they'll put you on different medications usually starting with metformin. Um, mm-hmm. which, which seems to be beneficial overall. Mm-hmm. But then if yep. it gets more out of control, then one of the interventions that we do is we prescribe insulin to people. So here, mm-hmm. uh, your blood sugar is too high, so go ahead and inject some insulin. But from what yep. you're saying, it sounds like the insulin level is already too high, and when we inject insulin, we're adding even more insulin. So, <laughs> so uh, I don't think that that's something that a lot of medical practitioners kind of connect. Um, yeah. They don't really connect the dots on that necessarily. Cause I didn't, you know, several years ago, I wouldn't have really realized that what we were doing with that. Um, but what's your opinion on that? Um, does it make sense to prescribe insulin to type two diabetics? And if not, what should we be doing instead? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah. So back to my, um, acting this out, um, by the time the person, so insulin it has become diabetic. It, it's gone through this sort of progression. Insulin has been high for a long time. Glucose levels have been climbing, climbing, climbing. In some type people with type 2 diabetes, the insulin will drop a bit, which accelerates the glucose even more. Or other instances, it stays high and the glucose just still relentlessly climbs onward. In true type 2 diabetes, what many people think happens is that the insulin comes up and the glucose comes up and then the insulin goes to zero and then it skyrockets. Mm -hmm. This is how so many people view type 2 diabetes. Even very trained individuals believe that it's like type 1 diabetes, which is a a true deficiency of insulin. Now, there are some people who have had type 2 diabetes who coincidentally develop type 1, which is an autoimmune disease and has nothing to do with type 2. I don't even think they should be given the same name Mm -hmm. in the same family of diseases because they're both diseases of opposites. Whereas type 1 diabetes is a disease of too little insulin, type 2 is primarily a disease of too much, or at least that's what's driving the disease. Regardless, even if insulin has come down a little bit in the person with type 2 diabetes, accelerating the spike in glucose, it's still significantly higher than it used to be before they ever started on that wayward metabolic path. But regardless, because we have a glucose-centric view of the disease, essentially the clinician is saying, well, to heck with your insulin. Who cares if we push it up even higher? They might not even know where it is. All they know is if they push the insulin up even higher, the glucose will in fact come down. And because that's the target, the glucose, they believe they're achieving the optimal outcome. However, it's much more complicated and sinister than that. The more aggressively we're giving the type 2 diabetic insulin to control their glucose, the faster we kill them. They are three times more likely to die from heart disease and twice as likely to die from cancer and twice as likely to to develop Alzheimer's disease. And throughout all of it, they need more and more and more insulin because they're becoming ever more resistant to it. So in the book, I use this analogy and it's quite heavy handed, but it's illustrative. And that is giving insulin to a type two diabetic is analogous to giving an alcoholic another glass of wine, hoping it will solve the problem. You're giving them more of the very thing that caused the problem because the truth is too much insulin is one of the primary causes of insulin resistance. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, a lot, again, a lot going on with, with what you explained there. So part of that is the nerdy science stuff, which is, you know, that we could draw graphs of the insulin, like how high is it when you get type two diabetes mm-hmm. and once your type two diabetes gets worse, if it gets worse as it progresses at, you know, is the insulin even higher or does it start to drop off? And there's a little bit of variability there, I guess. Um, Because you Mm -hmm. said like occasionally it'll drop down or that person will coincidentally develop um, the autoimmune type one diabetes. That's probably the the minority to say the least. Very uncommon. (laughs) But but it sounds like in the vast majority of cases, people with um, type two diabetes have still have excessively high insulin, even when they're they're. when it starts to look like their diabetes is so out of control that you need to, that you quote unquote need to prescribe them insulin, um, and to be fair to the medical practitioners, you know, in school, 
uh, I don't think it's caught on yet. Maybe now, maybe in 2022, if you went to a medical school class, then then maybe they're talking about measuring insulin levels and taking that into consideration <laughs> with uh, yeah. with the treatment. But certainly when I went to school, we were not taught anything like that. And so it was really just, you just kind of learn that, okay, eventually if it gets out of control, then you'll have to add on insulin, you know, if nothing else is working. If quote unquote, right. nothing else is working, but there might be something else that could work.